Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting a mini beach shed using gouache which I find will help create the beautiful and bright pastel colors. Let's begin by sketching out the shapes. On the left is the reference picture I'll be working from which is a photograph by Paul Fuentes who often creates refined photographic collages with beautiful vibrant pastel colors. I found this image on Pinterest but I'll link his website in the description box if you guys want to have a look at his beautiful gallery. I started by loosely sketching the basic shapes of the beach shed. I just tried to figure out the spacing of the shed in comparison to the small space that I have here, how high or centered I want the position to be and so on so I'm not spending too much time creating clean lines. For my sketch I felt like the position was too low so I decided to shift everything up by the same distance without first erasing the initial line so I can use the mistake as a form of measurement and once I feel the position is alright, I am going to erase the wrong lines and create a better job for the outline of the shed. In the reference, there are four boards, but I feel like since I don't have much width space, since the frame of my paper is more narrow than the reference, I'll be including three surfboards instead, which are a little bit larger in terms of ratio. I'm going to create a higher vertical composition by adding some palm trees on either side, as well as some vegetation and a beach ball below the surfboards. Once I've established the main elements and the ratio between them, I made sure that the lines are clear enough for me to follow and this way I can add on the details like the railings of the patio stairs, the door, window, and so on. For extra decorative elements, I'm going to add a weather vane on top of the shed. I'm also going to add a rescue float hung in front of the door and a shell above the window in the door. At the end, I decided to only add one palm tree on the right, so I'm going to clean up the outline to secure the position and how it's interacting with the rest of the elements, and next I'm going to go over the colors. I'm going to be using my Himi gouache, this is medium yellow, lemon yellow, orange, earth yellow, burnt umber, ochre, brass green, yellow green, sky blue, Prussian blue, white, and I'll also be using pale purple. For extra outlines, I'm going to be using my watercolor colored pencils. This is just a cheap hobby grade one. It's by Faber-Castell and they don't really have names of the colors, instead they have numbers. And I'll also be using my snowman ink drawing pen in black 01. If you don't have colored pencils, you can just use ink, but I just find the black is a little bit too harsh against the pastel colors for my taste. Now let's begin to paint. I'm going to start with a bit of sky blue, a bit of yellow green, and a touch of ochre. I'm going to mix all these colors together with the green and the blue being the dominant colors, and the ochre is just there to slightly mute it. I'm looking for a slightly muted bluish green color and once I like the tone I'm going to add a lot of white into it and since I'm mixing quite a lot I'm going to use a palette knife instead of my brush and once I'm happy with the color I'm just going to place it as the base color for the shed. The color that I've mixed here is a bit more blue compared to the reference image which has a bit more of a green tone. I like the color though so I'm going to keep it as this but if you want your color to be a bit more green then I would add a bit more yellow green in the mixture. I also decided to lighten it by adding a bit more white into the mixture because I felt like the initial base color is a bit dark after the paint has completely dried off. So I'm just going to layer on the lighter version of the color and of course paint in the rest of the shed. For the shed behind the railings, I'm just going to paint over the pencil marks because we're using gouache, it's actually really easy to layer on 
colors on top of the base. If you're going to paint along to this, be careful on the bottom right corner of the shed. The lines aren't very visible here, so make sure you know when to end the bottom of the shed. Moving on to the first surfboard, I'm going to use a mix of orange with ochre and white to lighten it and turn it into a pastel color. Be mindful that gouache dries darker than what you initially painted, so it might look light here but it will dry darker. For the small surfboard, I'm going to use the same color as before but with added medium yellow so this color is a little bit brighter. I'm going to use an even lighter color for the surfboard in the middle, so I'm going to use the previous color and I'm going to add a bit of lemon yellow and more white. Next I'm going to paint the roof, I'm going to use the previous color for the shed and I'm going to add this to the sky blue, I'm also going to add more of the yellow green and ochre. This will just create a darker version of the color of the shed. Again, if you want yours a bit more green, add a bit more yellow green. Or if you want yours a bit more blue, add more sky blue in the mixture. For the white portions of the shed, like the railings, frame of the door, window, and the bottom of the roof, I'm not going to use white as is. Instead, I'm going to create a neutral tone by using a mix of pale purple with some of the light yellow and also the shed color. And depending on how cool or warm you want the neutral color to be, you can play around with the ratio of the mixtures to change the dominant hue. For the shell, I'm going to use the light yellow color that's already on my palette. Next, I'm going to continue to paint on the railings. As you can see, the neutral tone that I have chosen is a little bit purple as my dominant hue, but as I mentioned before, you can change it up depending on the look that you're looking for. For the fish of the weather vane, I'm going to create a grey color, so I'm going to use pale purple, the blue from the shed again, and also some ochre. For the shadow underneath the white part of the roof, I'm going to use a mix of the shed color with added sky blue, pale purple, and also ochre, and this will create a neutral grey tone, and I'm just going to paint a line underneath the roof as well as the detail on top. As for the texture of the wooden pane, I'm going to use the same color as the roof which is a darker version of the shed color and I'm just going to paint on horizontal lines before I paint the detail of the railings. Next, I'm going to paint the float. I'm going to use ochre as the dominant color and I'm going to mix this to turn it into a more of a pastel color. As for the white details, I'm just going to use white as is so there's a strong contrast in the value. Next, I'm going to paint the trunk of the palm tree. For this, I'm going to use ochre as the dominant color and I'm going to neutralize it slightly by adding the light purple mix as well as the shed color just like before. By mixing other tones into whatever dominant hue I pick, I feel like it will just make the color a bit more consistent all throughout the painting. For the bottom of the trunk, I use a darker version of the color with less white. Next, I'm going to paint the palm leaves. I'm going to create lots of green tones on my palette. Here, I'm first using the yellow green with sky blue. I also want to add some ochre or any of the yellows, the lighter one or the medium yellow. And I also have grass green for easy access so I can play around with the ratio. Here I have grass green that I can use for the main green as well as the mix between sky blue and yellow green which will create a softer pastel green. I also added a bit of white. The yellows will brighten the green with a warmer tone and the ochre will darken and mute the green. I began by using a warm yellow green for some of the coconuts and the base of the leaf stems. 
Then I painted additional lines as the leaves draping down the stems. And I like to use variation of the lighter colors where I added some white into the green mixture. Some are a bit darker and some are a bit more lighter yellow greens. As I build on the colors, I like to add some burnt umber and grass green for a darker tone of green. And I'm going to keep repeating similar shapes for the leaves to create more density. When I'm painting more leaves on top, I like to leave out some space so you can still see parts of the lighter colors peeking through. Closer to the center where the leaves are growing out of, I like to use a bit of burnt umber and ochre just for a bit of a darker value and for some shadows for those inner sections. And for the outer part of the leaves, I like to add some yellow for some brightness. Then I'm also going to add some dots using ochre at the centers so the coconuts look like they're hidden behind the leaves. For the texture of the trunk, I'm using a mix of burnt umber and ochre to just paint the top. Then for some additional lines, I used the same mix with added white. Next, I'm going to paint the bushes next to the shed. And I'm going to treat this similarly as the palm tree. I started using a really yellow green color. Then I'm going to build it up using the slightly darker greens and you can play around with the ratio depending on what sort of tone you like to include in your painting. If you add too much of the darker values and the bush looks a little bit too dense, you can also brighten it up by adding the lighter green on top again. To add the density, personally I like to add the darker values just at the center or at the bottom of the bush and as I get towards the outer portion to make it look a little bit more fluffy and lighter, I just left it as the base color which is lighter. For the color of the sand, I'm using a mix of medium yellow, earth yellow, and white. Depending on the value that I'm looking for, I would use less white in the ratio. So in my case, for the bottom part of the sand, I use a lighter value. And in between the surfboards, which is under the shed, I use a darker value with less white in the ratio. For a bit of shadow, I decided to add a cooler tone from the color of the shed and I'm using a medium to thin consistency so it's a little bit more transparent to paint underneath the board, the beach ball, and also under the bushes. After that, I'm going to add more texture to the sand. I'm using a lighter value of the sand color and I'm also going to take some earth yellow to just add some lines so the surface looks kind of uneven. For the base color of the bowl, I use a mix of white with a little bit of earth yellow to create this creamy color. I just want to make sure everything is completely dry before I add on the details and here I have some blue that looks a little bit muted. It was mixed with a little bit of the earth yellow and white and as for the color of the top and the bottom, I used a mix of sky blue, ochre and white. After that, I'm going to add more shadows right under the beach ball and the surfboards. I'm just picking up the colors that I have on my palette already and just mixing it visually. This has a little bit of earth yellow and sky blue with white. You can also add some burnt umber to darken the tone, which I did here for the bottom of the shed. Next, I'm going to add the details to the boards. For the largest board here, I'm just using a mix of lemon yellow and white. I want to make sure that the value is light enough so it has enough contrast with the base. Next, I'm going to add the petal. For the handle, I used a mix of ochre and burnt umber and I just used whatever light color I have on my palette for the bottom of the petal itself. I do regret putting it on an angle though because I feel like it would benefit the composition if this was straight in the middle of the pedal board since the composition itself is quite flat, but it was too late for me. However, for your painting, you might want to make that adjustment. I want to increase the contrast of the pedal and the pedal board, so I decided to darken all of the boards from the bottom upwards. I'm just using a darker value or a darker version of the same base color. Next, I'm going to add the shadows for the shed and I'm using the same shed color as before but in a thin consistency and also with much less white in the ratio.
For the details of the railings, I'm going to line some of the edges using a mix of ochre and sky blue to create this muted purple color. And I'm going to place it on the vertical lines as well as the horizontal lines to redefine those shapes. For a bit of fun, I'm going to add cattails to the bushes. I'm not sure if they would even grow in that condition, but I just like the look of it, so I'm just going to add it on anyway using a mix of ochre, earth yellow, and white. I've pretty much painted all of the elements, so I'm going to erase the extra pencil marks. Next, I'm going to add outlines to define some areas of the painting to make the edges a bit cleaner. I use blue to line the wooden paints of the shed. I feel like this would work better with a dark blue-green instead, but this was the only color available. But I would recommend for you to use um, a dark blue-green color instead if you have it, because I felt like the blue actually had an effect on the overall look, making the shed look a bit too blue for my liking. As for the rest, I just outlined using similar colors or a darker version of the same colors as the base of the objects. While I'm at it, I also like to add darker values here and there to certain areas to rebalance the contrast all across the painting. In some areas, if I felt like the outline won't be strong enough, if it's drawn with pencil, I'm going to outline using my ink pen, like for the weather vane and also the detail of the fish on top. As for the rest of the painting, I'm just going to keep rebalancing the darker values, especially under the shed until I feel like the values are nice and cohesive all throughout the painting. Here I felt like the value of the railings and the shed is a little bit too close together so I'm going to increase the contrast by darkening the shed. I wasn't really sure how far I would increase the value so I'm going to do this layer by layer until I'm satisfied with the contrast so bear with me as I build on the darker values here. At the end, I felt like adding Prussian blue would help boost the darker values if it's mixed with other colors like the brown of the trunk here as well as the green for the leaves. As for the shed, I'm going to use Prussian blue mixed into the base color to create a darker value of the same color. For the shadow of the railings in between the boards, I'm going to use a mix of the blues with some ochre to create a muted purple and this time I'm using a lighter consistency and softening the edges with a clean damp brush so the color isn't so strong against the white. Here I'm adding some final outlines and also adding a bit of shadow under the ball so it doesn't look so flat. And that's basically it for this painting. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!